Hey there, this is Kamal and I just wanted to say that a few days back I was trying to create a project in PHP which I wanted to share with you guys on YouTube. And when I was trying to create that project, I had encountered a bug and it took me some time to actually find the bug and rectify it but at that point I just realized the fact that it was actually quite easy for me to find the bug and rectify the error which would have been quite impossible for me a year back when I actually started web development. And the reason why I was able to clear out that bug and figure out the reason why that was happening is because of the things that I've learned for the past year and the things that I've implemented to make my workflow easy and optimize my code as much as I could. So I thought why not create a video explaining the three main things that I've learned for the past year which might be helpful for you as well. So here's a video on how to optimize your PHP code. So let's get this started. So the first tip that I can give you guys is to write a lot of comments. I know you have heard it many times and I can't just stress on the fact how important it is to write comments. See the thing is that when you are trying to create a project, you have everything in your mind, you know what to do and you know what you have planned to do next. So just execute that and you are able to create that project successfully. But let's say you are done with that project and you keep it aside for less a few months or years maybe and if you come back and if you look at the code, it will be a mess like literally and you won't even be able to understand why you had written that function at that point. So at this point comments are quite useful as they make you understand the reason behind why you had written that particular function or that particular logic at all. So writing comments is like a best practice any programmer can have. They make your code more understandable but not just you but for everyone else who tries to use your code or who tries to understand and implement your code as well. So writing a comment is like the essence of a programmer. So make sure to write a lot of comments. Alright so the second tip that I can give you is to optimize your code by dividing it into parts. What I mean by that is that let's say you have a project and in that project you have three files. The first one is the index file, the second one is the login file and the third one is the about file. And in these three files you have the header, the navigation bar and the footer which are common. So instead of writing the header, navigation and footer individually for three of these files so many times, what you can do is that you can just remove that from that file and place it in individual files. So what I do generally is that I take the header and the navigation and put that inside a file called as header. Similarly, I take the footer and place it inside a file called as footer. And I just include that the top and bottom of each and every file that I want to use it in. And automatically by doing that I've just reduced the duplicate code and I've just written it once and I can just use it as many times as I want. And one another benefit that you have by doing this is that let's say you have to do some changes in the navigation bar like you have to change the links or something else. You just have to go to the header file, go to the navigation section and change a specific thing that you want to do. Automatically once you're done with that it will be applied to each and every page which would have been quite impossible to do in the previous project structure as you had to go to each and every file that has the navigation and you had to chain that logic. So by doing this you are just essentially removing the duplicates and you are just trying to have one set of component and you are just trying to include that in each and every file. Alright so the third tip that I can give you is to use the MVC architecture. So the MVC pattern is a design principle. So design principles are like a set of rules that you generally follow when you're trying to create a project. And in that design principles, MVC is a type of particular way of naming your projects and its files in a particular order so that whenever another person tries to identify your project and tries to understand the project structure, he will be able to easily identify as you're trying to follow a set of norms. And that norms is the MVC architecture. So it's not complicated. So MVC has three main parts. The first one is the M that is model and a model generally consists of all the files related to database. So specifically for PHP, the files that I generally have which are related to database are my database connection file which is named as db.php which has a particular function which just connects the database and returns a variable connection. That's it. That's the only thing that I have and that is placed inside the model. And some of the projects might have other files related to database and all of those files are generally kept under the model folder. And the next one is V which stands for view. So view is generally the part which is visible to the user. So all the pages on your website are generally placed under the view category. 
So you just keep your index file, your login file, your about me file and all the other files inside the view folder. But the problem here is that if you don't have your index file inside the root folder and you try to open the website, what happens is that the browser doesn't know what is the home page. So it doesn't have that index location, right? So what you have to do is you have to write another file which maps the URL to the index file path. So when you're trying to access the project inside the browser, you just have to redirect the browser to the view folder and inside that view folder, you have to redirect it to the index file. So it's actually quite a bit of tiring thing to do. So what I do is that I don't keep my index file inside the view folder. I just keep that in my root folder and all the other pages inside my project are generally kept under the view category. So the third one is the C which stands for controller. Okay, so before going further, let me first clarify a few things. I am not an expert in MVC architecture and I have no idea about all the other design principles I'm not, and I'm not that good at MVC as well. I just have a broad idea of what MVC is and how the project structure is defined and this is something that I have developed on my own for the past year trying to implement things and, and trying to categorize things so that they are easy for me to understand. And I think it is pretty easy for any other person who tries to look at my project for the first time. I think they will be able to understand the structure that I'm following right now. Okay, so going back to the controller. So this controller is like the brain of a project. So in the controller, I generally have four types of files. The first one is the functions.php and in that functions.php, I generally write all my functions which are being used across my project. So if I have to write a function to retrieve the data from the database, I just write a particular function in the functions.php file and I just include that file in whichever file needs that particular function and I just execute it. So that's the use for the functions file. The second one is the retrieve file. So what this retrieve.php file does is that when the data is being passed in the PHP, it generally happens to the URL, right? So when the data is being passed through the URL, this retrieve file takes that data and assigns that data to individual variables which I can access across my project. So that's the use for the retrieve file. So all my retrievals are being managed by a single file. So I just have to go to that file if I want to change something related to the URL retrievals at all. So the third type of file that I have is not a file actually, it's a folder and it's named as logic. So all the logic for all the pages that I have in my project are being written in this logic folder. So what I mean by that, so let's say I have my page called as login and I have to verify a user, right? So all the details or all the logic regarding the authorization and authentication of a user is being written inside this logic folder. So what I do is that for every view that is every page that I have in my project, I create a subsequent logic file. So let's say I have login.php. So for that, inside my logic folder, I have a file called as login login.login.php. So this is the logic for the login file. Similarly for the index file as well I have index logic and for the about page I have the about logic. So each and every file inside the view folder has a corresponding logic file inside the logic folder under the controller folder. So the last file that I use is the includes file. Okay so let's keep the include file aside for now and let's try to implement this. So what happens is that for the index page that is the main page I just want to have the functionality of functions, the logic and all the other pages as well. So if I want to include each and every file inside my index file, I have to write multiple include statements connecting to each and every individual file. And that increases the number of include statements inside my index file and that just makes it look a bit more messy, right? So what I do is that I just take all the includes that I want and just place it inside the includes file and just include this particular file inside my index page. So it looks something like this. So inside my index page, I have include quotation include.php and inside my include.php I have all the includes that I want to be there inside my index page. Okay now so let's just understand the control flow inside this project. So let's say I have a page called as login and in that I type in the username and password and just click on login and what happens is that the data is being passed through the URL and the retrieve file just takes that URL data and parses it and gives the data to two variables called as username and password. Since the username and password are now set, what I do is that inside my login logic, I write the code that since the data is being parsed and it has been given to the username and password variables, I'll just execute a particular function which retrieves the data from the database and just validates the database values with the data being given from the front end part just to check whether the user, username and password are correct or not. 
And if the data validation returns true, that means the username and password are correct. So I'll just redirect the user to the index page with the data of his personal profile. And the function here that I'm using inside the login logic to retrieve the data from the database is being given to me by the functions.php. So that is the flow of control inside my project. So this is something that I've developed on my own. So if you want it, you can use it, try to implement it on your own projects. And I can assure you that it's going to make it a lot easier for you to identify the errors since you don't have to go to each and every file and search for that particular error. All the code has been modularized. That means each and every section are in their respective positions. You just have to go to that file and check the file. That's it. So just try it out, see if it works for you or not. And I hope that you have an idea of what I generally do inside my own projects. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you liked what I watched till now. If you liked what I watched till now, then please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.